हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज सोबान अरशद यू आर वाचिंग सोबान स्पीक्स रियल जावा स्क्रिप्ट अ वेरी वार्म वेलकम इन टू दिस वीडियो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न टाइप्स ऑफ एग्जीक्यूशन कॉन्टेक्स्ट हाउ मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ एग्जीक्यूशन कॉन्टेक्स्ट आर देयर हाउ दे वर्क हाउ दे परफॉर्म विल कवर ईच एंड एवरी थिंग अबाउट एग्जीक्यूशन कॉन्टेक्सट लेट्स फर्स्ट डू अ क्विक री कैप ऑफ प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑल राइट सो इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी टॉक अबाउट एग्जीक्यूशन कॉन्टेक्सट इन जनरल what is an execution context and how it works so execution context is an environment where all your javascript program evaluates and executes execution context is further divided into two phases first phase is called memory creation phase and second phase is called code execution phase in first phase all your variables and your functions are being stored as key value pairs function equal to functions body and then let's say function 2 that is equal to its body so this is your memory creation phase in second phase that is code execution phase it is the place where actually all your lines of code executes line by line and in a sequence and that is because javascript is synchronous and single threaded language so this is execution context we talked about in detail in previous video you can find previous videos link on top right corner of your screen let's now start today's video there are basically two types of execution context first is global execution context and second is functional execution context whenever you run a javascript program the very first execution context that is created is called global execution context and rest all the things will be happening inside global execution context what is functional execution context whenever you call or you invoke a new function functional execution context is created both context global and functional are same in nature but there are slight differences i'll tell you in video this video will be having two parts first will be theoretical part and second will be practical part in theoretical part we'll be having an example and with the help of that example we'll try to dry run our code we'll also see how global and functional execution contexts are created and how line by line your commands are executing and in the second part of the video that is practical part i'll run that example in browser inside browser i'll show you how global and functional execution contexts are created how memory is being created and how your code is executing so first let's start global execution context okay so this is our example let me explain the code first we have a variable that is equal to 10 and then on line number 2 we have a declaration of foo function you can see the name foo after that on line number 7 we have another variable that is equal to invocation of foo function after that on line number 9 we have another function that is called bar but here is the point you can see we haven't declared anywhere bar function up till now bar functions declaration is starting from line number 11 to line number 13 you can see over here is that possible in javascript let me tell you one thing in most of the programming languages this behavior is not allowed you are first bound to declare the function and only then you can call it but here on line number 9 we are calling it first and line number 11 we are declaring it later so let's see if that is possible or not and finally on line number 15 we are consoling the value of sum how javascript knows what is saved inside sum from where this sum is coming we'll try to learn everything in this video let's start now all right when you run your javascript program the very first thing that happens it creates an execution context and very first execution context that is created is called global execution context execution context is further divided into two phases first phase is called memory creation phase and second phase is called code execution phase in first phase that is memory creation phase we are only interested to know how many variables and how many functions we have declared in our code and once we are inside code execution phase by that time we'll actually run all the code line by line so let's start our memory creation phase now so first of all on line number 1 we have a variable that is x let's allocate some of the memory to x and what will be stored inside x it is undefined that's a bit weird you can see x is equal to 10 but javascript is saving x is equal to undefined why javascript is storing undefined into x 
the reason is when we are in first phase that is memory creation phase we are not actually executing our code we are just interested to know the variable names and functions inside our code the actual value of x that is equal to 10 it is only be known when this particular line will execute as of now we are not executing we are just gathering all the variables and functions name that's why initially all the variables will be stored as undefined just like this after that we have a function declaration that is foo so let's allocate some memory to foo so what will be saved inside foo will that be undefined no it will be the complete body of the function and the body is this one this whole body is gonna be saved inside these parentheses that is how javascript saves all the functions in memory creation phase after that we have another variable that is sum so let's allocate some memory sum is equal to what should be stored yes initially it will be undefined after that we have another function that is bar so let's allocate some memory to bar and here again all the body of bar function will be stored from here to here from line number 11 to line number 13 now you can see we have stored x foo sum bar i mean all the available variables and functions we have already stored in our memory you can see here so it means memory creation phase has completed now it's the time to run our code execution phase let's start that and this is the time where actually all the lines of the code will be executed line by line control will start executing from line number one so let's execute our first line and that is variable x that is equal to 10 and this is the time when actually javascript knows what value should be stored inside x initially it was undefined but now javascript knows it wasn't undefined it is 10 so let's store 10 into x undefined will be gone and 10 will be saved instead okay on line number two we have a function declaration Keep in mind javascript has nothing to do with functions until unless the function is called or the function is invoked so control will skip from line number two to line number five and then control will go to line number six that is empty then control will directly go to line number seven yes there we have a variable that is sum and that is equal to invocation of foo function having an argument that is three after execution of foo function whatever value we receive will save that particular value into sum so now let's try to execute our foo function let me tell you one thing whenever you invoke a function a very brand new execution context is created again by having two phases first phase will be memory creation phase and second phase will be code execution phase and the functional executional name will be same as functions name so in our case that will be foo functional execution context like this and second thing that will happen control will immediately go to the line from where foo functions declaration is starting functional execution context is already created you can see in here and whenever an execution context is created the very first phase that runs that is memory creation phase we have to gather all the available variables and functions inside this body so let's see we are receiving a parameter so let's allocate some memory to param and again initially it will be undefined and secondly we have variable y let's allocate some memory to y as well and again that will be undefined like this after that we don't have any other variable or function declared in this body so now let's start code execution phase as i told you control is currently on line number two and there we are receiving a parameter and this parameter is coming from here and that is three so let's save three in here param is equal to three after that control will go to the line number three and there we have a statement that is variable y is equal to param plus param so let's write here y is equal to param plus param and javascript doesn't know what actually param is keep in mind whenever a variable or a function's name comes in code javascript immediately goes to the memory and there javascript checks 
if that variable or function is available or not. For now, JavaScript is checking if param is available in memory or not. And yes, param is available in memory and that is equal to 3. Just in case, let's say param is not available in memory. Well, in that case, JavaScript will throw a reference error. What is a reference error? Reference error means the variable name or the function's name that you are trying to call that is not available in memory. That is reference error. In our case, param is available in memory and that is equal to 3. So JavaScript will do something like this. 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. You can see y is equal to whatever the result of param plus param is and that is equal to 6. So technically y is equal to 6. This 6 should be stored in here in place of undefined. So this undefined will be gone and 6 will be saved. After that control will go to line number 4 and there we have a reserved keyword that is return y. y is equal to 6. Return keyword also telling us the body of this function has completed its execution. So whenever a function has completed its execution, the functional execution context will be removed. And second thing that will happen, control will immediately go back to the line from where that particular function was invoked. Control will now go to the line number 7. I told you earlier, whatever we receive from invocation of foo function, that value will be stored in sum. And we are returning y from foo function and y is equal to 6. So 6 should be stored in sum. Let's remove this undefined from sum and instead we'll save 6 inside sum in memory. Alright, after executing this, control will go to the invocation of bar function. Before invoking bar function, let me clear, we are declaring bar function on line number 11, but we are invoking that on line number 9. Is that possible? So let's see why this behavior is possible in JavaScript. And the reason is, you already know what is saved inside bar. Basically, the value of bar is the complete body of bar function that is saved in here. And we saved bar's body when we were in memory creation phase. Now when we are in code execution phase and we are calling bar just like you can see on line number 9 how we can call that? That is because immediately control will go to the memory and there it will check if that particular name I mean bar if bar is available in memory or not. If that is available in that case JavaScript will execute bar's uh, body whatever it says otherwise it will throw a reference error. So that is the reason that we can call the functions even before those are declared. Just like you can see we are calling bar function at line number 9 but declaration of function is starting from line number 11 to line number 13. Alright let's now call bar function. Whenever a new function is invoked very first thing that will happen it will create an functional executional context and the name will be same as functions name. So bar functional execution context, it will be having two phases first, first is memory creation phase, second phase will be code execution phase. And second thing that will happen, control will go to the very first line from where declaration of that function is starting. In our case, control will go to line number 11. Functional execution context is already created. So now we have to first execute its first phase that is memory creation phase. So let's see how many variables and functions are declared in this body. So you can see there is no function or no variable that is declared. So it means memory creation phase will be empty. There is nothing to do as of now. So let's directly start code execution phase. Okay so for now control is at very first line that is line number 11. There we are not receiving any parameter. So there we have nothing to do. Let's go to line number 12 now. At line number 12, we are printing hello world. That's only statement that is available in this board's body. So let's print hello world now. Hello world. So line number 12 is already executed and then control will go to line number 13. And there control sees the body of bar function has already executed and whenever the body of function is executed already by that time 
functional executional context will be removed and control will go back to the line from where that particular function was invoked. So in our case control is now again at line number 9. After line number 9 control will go to line number 10 that is empty and after line number 10 control will go to the line number 11 and there control sees again there is a function declaration and as I told you earlier JavaScript has nothing to do with function declaration until unless that function is called or until unless that function is invoked. So again control will skip all the lines from line number 11 to line number 13 then it will go to line number 14 that is empty then line number 15 yes there we have a statement and that is console.log sum what is sum how javascript knows what is saved inside sum whenever a variable name or a function's name is called javascript will immediately go back to the memory and there it will check if that particular name already saved in memory or not if that is saved in that case javascript will use that's value otherwise it will throw a reference error reference error means the name the variable or the function that you are trying to call that is not available in memory that is reference error in our case you can see sum is already stored in memory and the value of sum is 6 okay so let's execute the value of sum and that is 6 you can see here we have print 6 that is coming from memory after executing line number 15 control will go to line number 16 and that is empty so now as you can see we have already executed all the available lines of the code so it means the global execution context will also be removed let me do a very quick recap of today's video and then we'll start our practical phase okay so this is our example let's try to run again whenever you run a javascript program the very first thing that it creates it creates an execution context and that execution context is called global execution context then we have two phases first is memory creation phase second is code execution phase in first phase we are only interested to know how many variables and functions are declared in our code in our case we have variable x we have function foo then variable sum then a function bar so we have already allocated some memory here and one important thing all the variables in memory creation phase initially be saved as undefined actual value of variable will only be known when we'll actually executing our code in code execution phase so for now x and sum are saved as undefined and foo and bar they have saved complete body of their function like this so now we have completed our memory execution phase let's start code execution phase now at line number one we have variable x that is equal to 10 so we have write x is equal to 10 so this is the time when 10 will store into x this undefined will be gone and 10 will be saved after that on line number two we have a function declaration and function declaration has nothing to do until unless that function is called so control will skip line number two three four and five and then control will move to line number seven there we have another variable that is sum and initially sum is saved as undefined you can see in code that sum is equal to invocation of foo function so it means now we have to invoke foo function and whenever a function is invoked control will directly move to the line from where declaration of that function is starting and another thing that will happen it will create a functional execution context and that execution context again will be having two phases first is memory creation phase second is code execution phase in first phase we'll see how many variables we have and how many functions we have declared in body in our case we don't have any function available in but we have a parameter and then we have y variable so let's allocate some of the memory initially it will be undefined and y will also be undefined after allocating some memory to y we have covered our memory creation phase now let's move forward to code execution phase in that phase at very first line we are receiving a parameter that is 
coming from here and that is equal to 3. So this undefined will be gone and 3 will be saved. After that control will go to the next line and that is y is equal to param plus param. What this param is? To know what actually param is javascript will go to memory and there it will check what param is equal to. Param is equal to 3. So javascript will do some calculation and that is 3 plus 3 is equal to 6 means y is equal to 6. So this 6 should be saved in here. Undefined will be removed and 6 will be saved. After that on line number 4 we have a return statement. We are returning y. Since function already has completed its execution so functional execution context will be removed and control will go to the line from where that particular function was invoked. I mean on line number 7. Control is now on line number 7 and now we actually know what is the value of invocation of foo function having an argument that is 3 and the value is equal to 6. We are returning 6 from foo function. So now 6 should be saved in sum. You can see as of now sum is equal to undefined. So this undefined will be gone and 6 will be saved in here. Alright now control will go to line number 9 and there we are again invoking another function that is bar. Whenever a new function is invoked a brand new execution context is created. So you can see bar functional execution context is already created and very first phase will be started and that is memory creation phase. Control is now on line number 11 because we have invoked the function right and inside bar function we don't have any further variable or function. So memory creation phase has nothing to do in it. Then code execution phase is started. In code execution phase control will go to line number 12 and there we have to print console.log hello world. So this hello world is created then control will again go to line number 13 there it sees the function has already completed its execution. It means this functional co execution context will also be removed and control will again go back to the line from where the function was invoked on line number 9. Alright after executing line number 9 let's go to line number 10 and that is empty. Let's go to line number 11. Again there is a function declaration, javascript has nothing to do with function declaration until unless that function is called. So let's skip line number 11 to 13, then control will go to 14 that is empty, then control will go to line number 15, there we have to console the value of sum. Javascript doesn't know what is sum. So to know what sum is, javascript will go to memory and there it will check if sum is available it will use the value of sum otherwise it will throw a reference error. In our case sum is available inside memory you can see that is equal to 6. So let's execute the value of sum. Ok so here we have printed 6 already. So it means whole code has completed its execution. Once the execution is completed global execution context will also be removed. So this is theoretical part of today's video. Let's start practical part now. Welcome in the practical part of this lesson. So this is the very same example that we had in practical part. I've created a breakpoint on line number 1. That means when we'll run this code memory creation phase will already be completed and code execution phase will be started but control will stuck at line number 1. So technically when I run this code all the variables that is x and sum and all the function declarations that is foo and bar should be available somewhere in memory just like we are doing in practical part. Remember we were saving all the variables and functions in memory when we were in memory creation phase so same should be in here and also global execution context should also be created somewhere. Ok I am gonna show you everything now. So you can see in here the scope that is empty there is nothing. And then in call stack again there is nothing. So let me run the code now and let's see what happens. Alright. Let's check call stack first. There is one blue tick that is indicating anonymous is active context. Active execution context. And this anonymous is also known as global execution context. Okay. And you already know we are in code execution phase memory creation phase is already completed. So let's see where x, foo, sum and bar is saved. 
so let's go to scope then let's go inside global and here you can see foo is saved as like this and then let's go to bar bar should also be here somewhere yeah here is bar and now let's go to sum and sum should be undefined because sum is a variable and all the variables initially are saved as undefined so this is sum and that is initially saved as undefined and here is x and that is also undefined variables are stored as undefined and functions that are bar and foo those are having complete body of the function okay i am also creating breakpoints on every line so that we have a more clearer picture how things are happening behind the scenes all right here we go so now let's run our first line and uh, initially x is equal to undefined after running this line x should be equal to 10 let's run now all right line number one is already executed control went to line number two there it says it is a function declaration so javascript has nothing to do with function declarations until unless those functions are called okay now let's check in memory what is saved in x x should be 10 now you can see x is equal to 10 value of x is updated to 10 and sum is still undefined so, yes sum is undefined as of now now we are going to invoke foo function and we told you in earlier part that whenever a function is invoked a brand new execution context will be created and control will go to the very first line of that function from where the function is uh, starting its declaration before invocation of foo function let me show you there is only one execution context and that is named as anonymous that is global execution context now when i run this button now when i click this button it should be foo here foo functional execution context should be available here and also control will be on line number three it means memory creation phase for foo execution context will also be covered by that time so param and y should also be stored somewhere let's see if that happens click this button and now let's check okay first in call stack you can see global execution context is this one and foo is this and this blue tick is indicating that active execution context is foo now okay you can see control is at line number three so let's see where param and y is stored in scope in local memory local memory to this foo execution context has param that is equal to three and that is coming from there we are sending three as argument and we are receiving that in parameter line number two is already executed so that's why param is equal to three here and line number three is z to be executed so param is undefined as of now let's run line number three param should be equal to six then let's check yes now you can see param has update uh, sorry y has updated its value and that is six now and control is at line number four now when i click this button control will go to line number nine and six that we are returning from foo function will be saved in sum and also since this function will be completed it, its execution so foo executional context should also be deleted by that time let's check okay now we are at line number nine line number seven is executed sum should be six now let's check global then sum you can see sum is equal to six now and one more thing foo functional execution context should also be removed yes you can see in here only global execution context is available all right now we are going to invoke bar function and again another bar functional execution context should be created here let's check that yes we are now inside bar function so you can see bar execution context is created now and hello world should be printed in console now when we run this line okay as of now console is clear let's run this line and now hello world should be there in console yes hello world is available there Oh, sorry before line number 15 we have executed our bar function so this execution context should be removed you can see bar executional context is 
removed now and only global execution context is there now i am going to execute the line number 15 and once i i execute line number 15 this execution context that is global it should also be removed and one more thing inside scope this global memory should also be removed because all of the lines of our code will be executed already so memory will be wiped out execution context will be wiped out each and everything related to this program will be gone okay now let's try to run this all right sum was equal to six so six should be printed yes six is there and let's go back to call stack yes you can see execution context is no more there and also no memory is available now everything is gone everything is wiped out so boys this is how global and functional execution context works and this is how your code executes itself if you like my efforts and content please do like and share this video with all of your guys and also please subscribe my channel stay connected upcoming videos will be more fun